Oh, you spat right in my mouth. On this episode of Bondi Vet. Hello, little girl. Oh my goodness, aren't they cute? Kate checks up on some brand new puppies. When I didn't see a placenta, I was really concerned. Yeah, okay. When the mum doesn't pass the placenta, they can get so sick that they can die. She just doesn't really have much body reserves. She's really struggling. Chris is puzzled by a greyhound's mysterious collapse. She stumbles around, her head wobbles. I'm starting to worry. Uh, well, it's a mammal. Looks like a raccoon. And what kind of animal is Scott treating? You're going to be nice. <laughs> they, they are some they teeth. Go. They are indeed. Aren't they? Yeah. Make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. At the Bondi Veterinary Hospital, Kate is getting ready for a much anticipated home visit. This morning I received a call from a client. Her dog, Frankie, has had pups overnight. Bye guys. Bye. You know where I'm going? Enjoy, see the puppies. See the puppies. I love puppies. There's nothing as exciting as new life. Four-year-old Mini Dash and Frankie has been Kate's patient since she was just a puppy herself. Good girl. Now Frankie's owner, Carleen, is worried the brand new mum could have a serious issue. It's all right, darling. You've got your babies. Frankie means everything. She is like a child in my family. It's all right, baby girl. I haven't seen puppies being born before, so when I didn't see a placenta or placentas, I was really concerned because she was panting a lot. So I called Dr. Kate. Hi. Hi, how are you going? How are you, new mum? Tired. Are you? <laughs> yeah, very tired. So exciting. And she's got all three pups. All three survived. That's great. Let's oh. go have a look. Yep, come through. I'm really pumped. I can't believe that one of my little patients is having pups. You can hear she's in here. So it's a really big day for everybody. Frankie. <laughs> Kate has known Frankie since she was eight weeks old. <laughs> but the new mum doesn't seem happy to see her. Frankie is barking like an absolute crazy dog because she's a new mum. She is super protective of these pups. Frankie really doesn't like us being here. She is feeling like we're coming into her territory and we're probably going to steal her pups. So she is feeling not good about the situation. While Kate gives the new mum time to settle, Carleen shares her concerns with Frankie's first ever litter. I wasn't sure about the placentas. Yeah. Because I didn't see anything other than the puppies. Yeah, okay. When the mum doesn't pass the placenta, it's called a retained placenta, and it can be really life-threatening and really dangerous. They often get really lethargic, stop eating. They can get so sick that they can die. They're all wrapped in little sacks? Or yes, you didn't they see? were. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. So as long as they come out in their little sacks, and she's obviously cleaned them all up, then you don't have to worry. Okay. That is the placenta. Okay, great. Okay. Okay. It's all right, puppy. It's all right. With Carleen's fears now eased, Kate tries again to examine Frankie's new babies. Good girl. Oh my goodness, aren't they cute? So cute. Frankie being a new mum, we don't really know how she's gonna mum, so it's really important we check out how she's coping and then make sure her pups are all strong and fit and healthy. And she has eaten, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she's been really hungry. I feel like as though sometimes, especially the mums that get really protective and really stressed, forget to eat. Because if it was up to Frankie, she's not leaving these pups. That, yeah, she, over she's her only body. been to the toilet once. Yeah, right. Last night. And she's prepared to sacrifice everything to not leave them. Yeah. 
Frankie doesn't want to do anything that is going to take her away from those pups. So we do need to respect Frankie's space. <coughs> Unless Frankie has visibly something wrong with her, I'm probably just going to leave Frankie alone. All we really want to get out of today, I want to make sure that the puppies don't have a cleft palate. I want to make sure that their umbilical cord looks like it's healing well. And I want to make sure that their hearts are good and their weights are good. Okay. Under protest from mum, Kate finally begins her health check on the tiny babies. Okay, this is little dapple boy. I'll put you on the scales. The first one we've got is a little dapple coloured boy. I'm really happy with this little guy's weight. He's not even a day old yet and he is strong. He is by far, I think, going to be the biggest. Do you see other dapple? Okay. The next little pup we've got is a little dapple coloured girl. She's absolutely gorgeous. Hello, little girl. She's littler. And her little paws are um, tan and her face as well. Okay, we're going to put her on the scales like this. Okay, like that, Frankie. It's okay, look, she's right here. As soon as I take this little girl over to the scales, Frankie just runs out and she's like, whoa, where are you going with that little puppy? Okay, I know, I know, <laughs> you love her. She's a good mom, isn't she? Yeah, very protective. Hi, Frankie. Okay, come on, we'll take her back. She's little, isn't she, Frankie? Come on, let's go back here, Frank, come on. After weighing each pup, Kate checks to make sure its heart is okay and that there are no problems with the newborn's mouth. Hey, Frankie. Ah! I just have a look and just make sure there's nothing wrong with your mouth. Okay, no cleft, that's good. I always worry about the littlest one. It's just something I do and she's the one that we do have to keep probably the closest eye on just to make sure that she is getting a nipple and she is getting enough food. Wing baby number three. The third little puppy is Frankie's little doppelganger, except that he's a boy. It's okay, Bubba. It's okay. Check your baby. He's just here. Three very healthy little babies, Frankie. Good job. Dr. Kate was really happy with the weight, the look of the puppies, the umbilical cords were fine, no cleft palates. Super proud of Frankie and relieved that the puppies are all healthy. They're absolutely beautiful. Well done, Mum and mum number two. <laughs> All your babies are great. They're amazing. You've done a great job, girl. Great job. To be honest, as soon as I walk through those doors, I can see that Frankie is totally cool. She's like, I don't need you. I've got this. They're all so beautiful. You've done a good job. Frankie's done a good <laughs> job. I'm gonna check in with you next week and see how we're going. Okay, fantastic. Thanks so much. No I feel more relaxed. Okay, good. <laughs> See ya. I've seen Frankie when she was just a baby and now she's a new mum. So this is a pretty special day for me. So you're looking at the list for today there, Kirsty? Yeah, it's not too much going on, is there? Mm, well. So you're not telling me, Scott. <laughs> At the Richmond practice, Scott and receptionist Kirsty are awaiting the arrival of a very unusual patient. Hi, guy. An orphan fox is being brought in by Scott's friends, Andy and Keeley. Kirsty, this is red. The young couple run an alpaca farm in Yorkshire, but often volunteer to take on wildlife that has nowhere else to go. Kirsty's favourite animal is a fox. <laughs> so you've literally made her day. You literally made her week. <laughs> Red was found as a cub. There were several attempts to return her to the wild, but after the last release, she was discovered emaciated and close to death. Hello, beautiful. I mean, how rare is it you can actually touch what should be a wild animal? <laughs> With Red unable to survive in the wild, Andy and Keeley volunteered to give her refuge. We've got a large enclosure uh, within a captive environment where she would be perfectly cared for and we can offer her protection. And although it sounds very cheesy, a lot of love. But before Red can move into her new home, she first needs to be de-sexed. 
The spay is really important for red for a number of reasons. First of all, to try and rule out things like ovarian cancers and mammary tumours, but also when red goes back to the farm, she's a captive animal. So of course we don't want her to have any babies, but also if she calls to male foxes, there's a lot of other vulnerable animals at the farm that could be injured. I know. Can we just do a quick exam just to make sure that she's okay for the spay? Yeah. Uh, and we know we're doing the right thing for her. All right, let's have a little look at your yeah. baby girl. Okay. Look at those. You wouldn't want to be bitten by those, would you? <laughs> okay. I'm just amazed that I can touch this fox without her trying to bite me or run away. To look into her mouth, her eyes, have a look at her ears, listen to her heart, these are all firsts for me and it's absolutely incredible. You know, looking at her makes you rethink what the vast majority of people think about foxes. It's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah they do get a bit of a bad reputation, unfortunately. They do. <laughs> yeah, they do. Especially around here when they go and eat uh, people's pet rabbits and guinea pigs. Yeah. <laughs> foxes really do polarise people here in the UK. They either love them or they hate them, especially when their numbers are increasing rapidly in urban areas. Now, they might live in close proximity to us, but they're still wild animals. They shouldn't be approached by the general public. But because of Red's history, she's very much a one-off case. I don't see there being any risks to this particular procedure. With Red passing her health check, the spaying of the young fox can go ahead. I can see how bonded you two are, <laughs> and Keely, I know that you are. Vet nurse, if I yes, remember right, rightly. Yeah. So, uh, how would you like to help me perform the surgery on your girl? I'd love that. That'd be brilliant, <laughs> yeah. It's good that I can be there for Red, especially if she's going under anaesthetic, so there's someone familiar there for her. And Red hopefully feels a little bit more secure with what's going on. I think I'll just sit outside and worry if that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Not my little girl. Good. As always with animals, you take them on, and as soon as they come into your care, you can't help but become attached to them. It's like adopting a child. Good girl. Mummy's got you. Yeah. So, Emma, I've got your patient red here. Yes, please. Here she is. You call me a fox. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is yeah. Keely, and this oh, nice to meet you. is red. Nice to meet you. Put that way. You said you were bringing me a patient for a spay. You did not say you were bringing me a fox. <laughs> No. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. It's a beautiful girl. surprise, though. Oh, you had. You had. Oh, it is yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Good girl. Oh, good girl. Sweet, it's always a bit more nervy when Mum's watching. Yeah. <laughs> Just that a you little find. little <laughs> yeah. A nurse mum. I know. We need to be on our best All behaviour best. today. Hi, sweetie. It's definitely fascinating for me to be here to watch this. I've never seen a fox under anaesthetic before. I've only ever seen them in the wild. So it's nice to be this up close with her doing something um, different, really, nurse-wise. All looks good. She's nice and settled under anaesthetic. Good. Bit nerve-wracking, but I'm sure she'll be fine. It's funny, I just <laughs> randomly feel sort of elated and nervous. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what it is. I think it. I think it's a fox. I think it's. It's obviously. It's. You know, Keely, as cool as you're being about this. Obviously, I know how much you care about this fox, don't you? Upstairs, Red's other owner, Andy, is anxiously waiting. It's always nerve-wracking. It's only a short time, but it seems like hours when you're here waiting. This operation's gonna be one of first. Like, I'm just looking at that going, it's not just a spleen, it's a fox spleen. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is a fox a something, fox. isn't it? Mm. You've got a big smile on your face. I've not I seen you smile as much for ages. Look at that. Mm. It's just because it's amazing. What a great job we've got. Andy and Keely feel it's really important that all the animals that they look after are neutered. So to have this fox spayed is just the right thing for her and for her future to ensure she doesn't have babies. So that, my friends, is that. Red spayed, all done. Let's wake our girl up, shall we? Absolutely. I can barely tell you've been in there. <laughs> Thank you, Keely. You know, I aim to please. <laughs> all right, this Don't is... Don't make his head go No, I do. I do love a really small incision line. Hello, expecting Dad. <laughs> Here she is with Mummy. Hello. 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 H
She's been such a perfect little patient, hasn't she, Keely? She has. She's been, like, came around really nicely. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. She's ready for the lovely hills of Yorkshire. So, as sad as it is, it might actually be the last time you guys have a proper cuddle with your girl yeah. because uh, we need to start encouraging you to be a bit more wild than you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Physically being able to hug a fox is without doubt a unique experience. But we don't want Red to be a pet under any circumstances. She'll be a wild animal living within a captive environment. And I really hope it's okay if I uh, invite myself up to see this beautiful patient of mine. Yeah, by all means, but if you're coming up anywhere, there's a yeah. few other patients you might want to see. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah possible. You, are you going to elaborate at all? Uh, no, I like a little element of surprise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and I like a challenge, so. <laughs> Considering all the crazy animals that he looks after, I'm sure it's going to be lots of fun. Goodbye, gorgeous girl. Can't wait to see you soon, OK? Scott's now on his way to Yorkshire in northern England for a reunion with his patient, Red. I'm so excited to be able to catch up with my good friends Andy and Keely again and just to see how their beautiful little fox Red is getting on. When she was first rescued, she was unbelievably tame. Even though she'll never be able to return to the wild, Andy and Keely are hoping with a little bit more time and space, more of her natural instincts will return. It'll be great to see how she's getting along, but I've got a sneaking suspicion that that's not all I'll be getting up to when I get up there. Come on. Foxes are solitary animals, and Red is now living in her own enclosure girl. with inside shelter and access to an outdoor run. Good girl. Andy has been gradually Good reducing girl. human contact. Feeding her is from arm's length. There's no more hugs, unfortunately, but that's exactly what we want. She's acting like a wild animal. Hey, Andy. Hi, how right. you doing? Yeah. Hello, Red. <laughs> Hello, gorgeous. How's my patient? She's doing really well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she recovered really well. Mm. But more of a wild streak in her now, which is mm. good. We absolutely are not going to put her in the face of death again. So she needs to be in a secure environment and as close to wild as this fox will ever get. I'd love to stroke you, but you know what? I know that's the wrong thing. It's tough, this animal welfare malarkey, it isn't it? It certainly is. It certainly mm. is. She just have times when she calls out for company. And it is heartbreaking to sort of uh, lock the door at night and think, oh, bless her, she's crying out. But you know it's the right thing to do at the end of the day. But I'm a little concerned for her next door neighbours because <laughs> <laughs> those ducks are going to get more nervous the more wild she gets. <laughs> hey? They certainly are. That's it. Remember, love thy neighbour. <laughs> All right? <laughs> So these are the patients I want you to have a look at. OK. Andy and Keely have asked Scott to help them with two of their most unusual animals. Go on, take a guess. <laughs> uh, well, it's a mammal. It looks like a raccoon. It does, and that's what it's named, it's a raccoon dog. OK. So... And either it looks really sweet or it's trying to get me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one. He, he is quite sweet. I have to be tentative with him. Hello. Looks like a cat. I would imagine that Scott has never seen a raccoon dog before. Oh, hello. Aren't you beautiful? Although people seem to believe it's a raccoon, it's not related to a raccoon in any way, shape or form. It's actually a canine species. The pair of raccoon dogs living at the farm are brother and sister, Bert and Baby. They were both sold as pets to separate homes, but were rejected and have now been taken in by Andy and Keely. <laughs> hello, you're going to be nice, hey? Are you going to be nice? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they are advertised online as being dog-like and very friendly. And unfortunately, then people do buy them, uh, realise they can't cope with them, and then they do end up in rescue centres. Today, Andy and Keely are hoping to reunite these siblings. What we're trying to do here is we want to integrate them together. But before we can do that, we need a health check from a vet before we can think about introducing animals together. Let's get to it. Let's get you in there. So raccoon dogs, by their very nature, are social creatures and they form a big family unit. So we want to sort of recreate that within the captive environment. We've castrated Bert 
simply because we don't want any undesirable offspring and not to mention the fact that they're brother and sister, so we don't want any inbreeding whatsoever. Hello, Bert. So he's our male raccoon. We got him when he was younger, so he has spent a lot of time around humans, hence why he's a bit more amicable. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Right, this Enough. is them amicable, is it? <laughs> wow. They, they are some teeth. They are indeed, aren't they? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> they, I nearly had my first raccoon dog bite. Okay. Raccoon dogs originate from East Asia and are often hunted for their fur. Wow, just feeling this fur, it's absolutely incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it's fantastically thick. Um, unfortunately, that's part of the problem. So they originated from Japan and they were right. imported to Eastern Europe for the purpose of hunting, for the fur trade. Well, most people don't wear fur anymore. But unfortunately, in 2008, they found traces of raccoon dog fur in fake fur as well. You're joking. So you could be inadvertently wearing raccoon dog there. Oh my God, it doesn't feel, <laughs> doesn't feel like. <laughs> I don't think it is. Well, let's vaccinate you, mate, and then we can reintroduce you to this little lady next door, eh? It's really important to check animals over before they're going to be integrated with another animal, just to make sure that they are healthy, and then once you've established that, to vaccinate them to protect their health. Good boy. And then you can have your friend. With Bert vaccinated and given the all clear to mingle with his sister, it's now baby's turn. But Andy has concerns about today's experiment. Baby is quite a subdued, subordinate female. Bert, on the other hand, is quite immature, so he wants to play all the time, whereas she wants to act like a, an adult raccoon dog. So I'm worried that when they get together, he might be a bit too rough with her. Hello, sweetie. Hello. <laughs> Do you smell vet? Do you? That's probably the problem. Scott now needs to capture Baby for her vaccination. Ah, gotcha. Catching my first raccoon dog was actually not quite as terrifying as I thought that it was going to be. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> I mean it, poor baby. <laughs> right. And hey, I didn't get bitten, so successful outing. Can we have a little hug? Good girl. Yeah, that's it, good girl. Good girl, that's it. We're hoping when they're together, she'll come out of a shell more so she can become more of a raccoon dog, hopefully. They oh, play nicely. They play nice, yeah. yeah. All right, we'll give you your vaccination. Good girl. Hey, and then you can finally live the rest of your life with your brother. Okay. Hey, you're all done. Oh, Cut over. Like a medic that stands on the side of a football field just in case of injury, I need to be here to make sure that when these two raccoon dogs get introduced, that they Don't. rip each other to shreds. If there is any kind of injury, they can bleed out quite quickly, and it's a really important idea that a vet's here to make sure that everything goes smoothly. You're looking yep. a little nervous. A little bit. But yeah. she seems to be looking for him. Yeah. So that's a good sign. All right, Andy, shall we uh, bring bro over? But be gentle with your sister, young man. Just place him down. There you go. Now remember, you're a guest. Yeah. So be polite. Ready? Let's just hope there's no bloodshed. No overt aggression, straight yeah. up, so that's good. And you know how siblings can fight, don't you? Quite right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Good boy, Bert. A little bit of grooming going on there. That's got to be a good sign. Yeah, really good sign. Yeah. The introduction's gone really well. The mutual grooming that's occurring and the fact that there's no aggression whatsoever, I would feel comfortable leaving them now as a little family unit. We'll obviously keep an eye on them and monitor them on a regular basis to make sure there's no sort of untoward aggression or um, injuries to either of them, but I think it's looking promising. Little brother, come home to roost. With the raccoon dogs happily settled... Right, so this is our newest resident, youngest animal on site. Andy and Keeley have got one more test for Scott and his knowledge of exotics. Looks like a mutant mouse <laughs> with a echidna-like spiky coverage with weird sort of rabbit-like feet. I think we try to make Scott's visits here a little bit more interesting. I'm sure he's used to cats, dogs, rabbits, guinea pigs, so I think something a little bit different to spice up his life and to test his knowledge, really. This is a common tenrec. Mate, I'm going to stop you right there. There's nothing common about that. <laughs> <laughs> Peaches is an eight-week-old baby that came from a zoo and is currently living in Andy and Keeley's home until she grows up. Yeah, she's quite fast. Oh, my Lord, she's so weird. <laughs> you are so incredible looking. Oh, look at that nose. We'll test you on which animal it's related to. Mm -hmm. Can you take a guess? That would be a clue. 
a long nose, an extremely long nose, in fact. Oh, I can't be an elephant. It is, yeah. So one of its <laughs> relatives is an elephant. I'm absolutely amazed to find out that a tenric is actually related to an elephant. And apparently in their evolution, one of them decided to move to Madagascar, where they have lots of trees, so they were smaller, and then you've got elephants roaming on the plains and they got to grow a hell of a lot bigger. Well, you see, you learn something new every day, a bit. I have such respect for Andy and Keely. They are surrounded by animals that they look after 24-7. And the fact that then when they come back to their sanctuary, their home, and they still have peaches in their care just shows how much they love the animals they're looking after. How lucky are you, mm -hmm. hmm? In the penthouse suite with Andy and Keely, eh? <laughs> Before Scott leaves Yorkshire, Andy has asked him to examine their oldest alpaca, senior citizen George. Hello, mate. You must be George. I must be honest, I'm not the alpaca vet that I could be. We don't really have a huge amount of them running around the hills of Richmond, so it is a new species for me to work with, but they do seem lovely. George acts as a headmaster in this group, so he's in charge of the adolescents. What are the challenges? of looking after these particular creatures? Well, they're fantastic animals to work with, but uh, they're renowned for doing one thing, and that one thing is spitting. Oh, that's <laughs> delightful, isn't it? Everything that's worked here has had it in the mouth, full in the face. Good to know. <laughs> Thanks for the warning. But despite the heads up... <laughs> oh, you spat right in my mouth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're in lots of challenges to alpaca farming. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst I'm just having a nice chat with Andy and looking at all these beautiful alpacas, one of them spits right down the back of my throat. It's totally disgusting. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> oh, man. Oh, go away. Stop it. <laughs> Despite having a bad taste in his mouth from the welcome party, Scott is not going to be deterred from taking on George's health check. Come on, sweetheart. That's a good boy. Here we go. Perfect. Oh, OK. You can let me have a little look at you. Good boy. Good boy, I know. Let me just have a look in here. George is a 19-year-old alpaca, arguably one of the oldest in the country. Um, he's got a special place for us because he is the boss of the park. He's got a lot of attitude, but he's also got a lot of affection. And he's got a few loose teeth in here. Yeah. Well, they're still healthy and they're still within those cavities, so I don't think they need to be removed. But I suppose, considering his age, it's no big surprise yeah, yeah. that he's got some loose teeth. It's amazing he's got his teeth still in his <laughs> head. <laughs> Quite, yeah. Isn't it really, hey? With no infection or gingivitis found, George has avoided a dental procedure this time round. Scott now needs to listen to his chest and heart. Hey, 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 George, come on, mate, come on, come on, come on. George decides that he doesn't want me to listen to his heart. He's an old man, he knows himself, and so he starts to give me a bit of a kick. Hey, 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 no kicking. So it's nice and strong and slow. This boy has still got some time in him yet, I think. Good, Good boy, George. Well, you know, you were kicking me, but you know, we can put that behind us, hey? Scott's last check is on George's ageing legs. So what I'm just feeling is, uh, rather than a sort of smooth, flexible, well-lubricated joint, this is actually like nuts and bolts. I mean, really, what he's got here, Andy, is just the arthritic knees of an old man. Yeah. As far as George's joints are concerned, I think a little bit of anti-inflammatory on a daily basis would be fair enough. But I think George really just needs a lot of TLC and a lot of love. And it's very clear that he quite enjoys a cuddle. He likes a bit of affection. Yeah, That's right, so yeah. I think just keep on doing what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Lots of love for the old boy. There you go. Yeah. We can do that, can't we? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Just as we're finishing up with George, Mother Nature takes its course. It's not really our kind of show. <laughs> and on that note, I think it's time for me to go home. Well, Andy, thanks very much. Again, another eventful trip. <laughs> always a pleasure. Thank yeah. you so much for your help. And always yeah, a pleasure yeah. and uh, never a chore, but actually there's always a lot of chores. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly will. We'll find some more for you next time as well. I'm sure you will. All right, <laughs> cheers, mate. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. There's one thing that I can be certain of in Sheffield. The learning curve never stops. This time I can add alpacas, raccoon dogs, and even tenrecs to my veterinary CV. 
but I absolutely love my new patient list, even the ones that spit. Nine-month-old Betty is a failed race dog who's been dumped with Greyhound Rescue. They thought she was dead, first of all, because she was laying so still and wouldn't move at all. So, you know, why? We don't know. Peter was called in to save the puppy after she suddenly collapsed. How are you? I'm Chris. Hey, Peter. This is Betty, isn't it? Hey, Betty. Now the neglected Betty needs urgent medical attention and a new home. She's quite unsteady there, isn't she? People see them with the muzzle and they think they're dangerous dogs. Whereas, in fact, they're the exact opposite. They're very friendly, very gentle and affectionate. 40 mile per hour couch of potatoes, that's what they are. Okay, her heart rate's a little bit high. With the amount of fleas that she has, that could be playing a part. I'm sure you'll agree, she doesn't look like a, like a greyhound puppy should. It's a mystifying case. Hopefully blood tests and x-rays will provide some clues. X-ray. There's not much food going through her digestive system. There's a bit of air, but really this is just pointing towards the fact she hasn't eaten for days. And on top of the fleas and on top of the fact she just doesn't really have much body reserves, she's really struggling. The fleas are easy to treat, but the blood tests will have to be sent to the lab for further analysis. Chris is almost certain Betty's collapse has been caused by malnourishment. That can be fixed with a high calorie diet and rest. What I'm most concerned about right now is the fact that when you look at her, Betty's got this general lack of coordination. She stumbles around, her head wobbles. I'm starting to worry there might even be something more serious going on here. If I had to have a hunch, it would probably be head trauma, given the fact that racing is a tough game. And if she's had a fall or even been hit on the head, then this would explain everything. That would be why she's been given up in the first place. You've got to eat something, all right? Come on, just start small. Come on, Betty, you just need to eat something. If you need your strength back, you need to start here. It's all right. You cheer up, huh? You cheer up first. It's just really sad to see a puppy so dejected. She's had the worst possible start in life, and you really wouldn't blame her for just giving up. I'm just hoping that we can turn that all around. But some of these seem a little bit strange, but they're all tests to really work out how her brain and how her spinal cord are functioning and how well they're sending the messages. It's been 24 hours since Betty was carried into the Bondi clinic after mysteriously collapsing. There we go. There we go. Even after a good feed and rest, the nine-month-old greyhound is still unsteady on her feet. She has all the necessary reflexes and reactions, but they're, they're not 100%. They're sort of about 80%. She's negative to toxo and neospora, OK. Yeah. And even though her blood tests are back, there's still no clear-cut answer as to what's causing the puppy's lack of coordination. OK, what this means is that Betty doesn't have an infection or parasites in her brain. So, really, my hunch about her having a knock to the head, it might just be right. The good news, though, is that brain injuries, they can heal. They can get better, provided they have plenty of TLC and plenty of care. Betty's rehabilitation could take weeks, but even if she responds, there is another major problem. Thousands of greyhounds are bred every year, and of those, only a very small portion ever make it to the track. The sad thing is that no one wants the losers, and so a lot do end up getting put down. I really hope that Betty will find a great home. She is a character, she's loving, and she's incredibly gentle. You've just got to hope that she's going to be one of the lucky ones. You need some open space, what do you say? 
Two weeks later, yeah, Betty the dumped top. greyhound is greatly improved and strong enough to check out her new neighbourhood. You think about her life before, and it would have been in a cage and occasionally getting out to the track. She would never have seen the ocean before. This is a groundbreaking day for her. Now that's second gear, Betty, isn't it? Can I ask, is there a third? No, okay, stay in second. Got it, got the message, good. Despite the fact she's not the fastest of runners, I'm encouraged by the fact she is moving quite nicely. She's showing a great improvement from where she was before. While she's not perfect, she's come a long way. And there is good news about her adoption. Thanks to Greyhound Rescue, Betty is getting a new home where she can lead a long and happy life. She is a lovely dog, and it's exactly what she deserves. One month later, Betty is a completely different dog. Hey, <laughs> Chris, how are you? It's, is this Betty? Yeah. yeah. Hey, Betty? How different is she? How are you doing, girl? Look at you, huh? Mate, yeah. I think you were the medicine. Yeah, no, how are you going? Good to see you, mate. Yes, she's settled in probably the fastest of all the dogs. She's just so easy going and so lovable and so trusting and she's just a big floppy, sooky cutie. I mean, she's just absolutely gorgeous. It's great for any patient to get better, but one that's been through so much and now loves life so much, it's really special. show is Bondo Vets. My favourite episode was the one with the, the kid and what was your favourite one? At Sash, two special little arrivals are in the waiting room. We're at Sash, Ruby. Sisters Emily and Ruby are Lisa's biggest fans and have convinced Mum and Dad to bring them in to meet their idol. When reception told me that these two gorgeous girls have popped in for a visit, the least I could do is come out and say hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. What are your names? Mine is Emily and this is my sister Ruby and that's our baby sister Charles. Oh wow. Lee. Where have you come from? Melbourne. From Melbourne all the way up to Sydney. You guys want to be vets when you're bigger? Yes. Yeah? What sort of animals do you like? Oh, it's hard to say because I like lots of different animals. Come over here. I've got a little gift for you too. We don't have a lot of presents to give away here at Sash, but we do have a bit of an unconventional show bag to give the girls. It's got a surgical hat, a mask, some booties, so they can get ready to become vets in training. See, we have to wear these hats to make sure that we don't get any hair into the wounds. And then a mask, because you've got to make sure that you're not breathing onto the wound. Oh, you look like a vet already. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Thank you. It's my pleasure. When I see Ruby and Emily here today, it brings back memories of when I was a child wanting to become a vet. And I'm so glad to know that the hard work we do inspires these young kids. Hi, I'm Dr. Alex Hines. If you love our show and you want to see some more amazing stories, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on the next video.